Bless Captain Paul with this United in Christ. What we out here doing today, we out here in the neighborhoods trying to find our people, all right? What you see above us is the missing people uh, flyer. In our neighborhoods, in Oklahoma by itself, there's 121 reported cases of people that's being taken for uh, sex trafficking. So there's no news about it on the internet. There's no way to find out. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take matters in our own hands to make sure that we're going into the neighborhoods and searching for our people, all right? So that's what we're doing. We are here campaigning for the missing uh, missing people uh, campaign to make sure that we put in our brick in in our community so we can bring our people home, all right? Most of the people that's being taken is blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans in our community. So we must do something about it. And I challenge you to do something about it as well, all right? Shalom, most high in Christ bless. Israel united in Christ. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel united in Christ is a non-violent Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat as stated in Leviticus chapter 5 verse 1. Hey, shalom, 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 Israel. Hey, 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 most high in Christ blessed. Welcome to another edition of Precept Upon Precept. We are your hosts out of New Orleans. My name is Captain Sherman. To my left. Officer Mikael. And to the far left. Officer Iran. Officer Akiem. All right, all praise to the Lord. So tonight, Tonight, you brothers and sisters who have been following the news as of late, there is an outright attack on black, well, we know the Israelites, right, on our masculinity, right? You see it in the news, uh, and we're going to touch on a lot of this stuff tonight. And some of the things um, derive, of course, we know in the, the origins of slavery. So the first thing I want to start with is this. I was looking at the scripture earlier. Um, let's start with Ecclesiastes 7, verse 29. The foundation of IUIC is the Holy Bible. So when we take the Holy Bible and bring these scriptures out, we can show you that the Bible is a real book by giving you concrete examples that are happening right now. Yep. It's amazing. So look, um, oh my Lord, it's, it's, you know what, hey, listen, you'll never see an Arab or a Chinese dude like, you'll never, never. see that. You'll never, never see that. Look, um, you got that? Yes, sir. Watch this, Israel. Ecclesiastes chapter seven, verse 29. Check this out. Lo, this only have I found, that God had made man upright. He said, lo, this only have I found, that God, meaning the God of Israel, made man upright. And that's talking about all nations. That's talking about the Arab man, the Chinese, the Japanese, okay, the East Indian, okay, the, the real African, and the Israelites and the Edomites. All men he made upright. Why? Because God's a God of order. Just like he made the animal world. The giraffe, there's a, there's a woman, a uh, female and a male giraffe, okay? Read it again. Lo, this only have I found, 
that God had made man upright. Upright. Come on. But they have Stop. thought out. Read it again. But. But they. But they, meaning man, right? Man, because it ain't the woman that's pushing this agenda, by the way. It's these men that's pushing this, this agenda we're about to go into. It's not women that are banned together. It's primarily men. Read on. But they have sought out but many they, what, inventions. What, what, what they did what now? They, they have sought out many inventions. They had a think tank. They had to really think about it. They had to mm -hmm. sort this out. How many? One invention. But they have sought out many inventions. So there's a lot of inventions that man has sought out that's against him being upright. We, we only got about an hour, not even a little more than an hour and 20 minutes. We are going to show you on today's show there is an outright attack on black masculinity. It's absolutely amazing. It's terrible. Officer, anytime, Mickey, Officer Miguel and Officer Eran, you're welcome to please chime in. Uh, because all of you at home should be, if you are a black man in America, and I'm talking about you light-skinned Puerto Ricans too, <laughs> and you Colombians on me no negro. Yeah, you're not no negro, but you're Moreno. And they call you Moreno Negro, okay? Mm. So look. Um, hey, go ahead, brother. I, hey, uh, Soldier Stealth, pull up that picture of Terry Crews right there. Oh, my Lord. Make sure the people see that. Let me know once they're able to see it. I can read that scripture one more time. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29. Lo, this only have I found, that God had made man upright. So the Most High God made man upright, meaning in order. Read. But they have sought out many inventions. This is one of the inventions that they have sought out. This is the, this is a direct shot at black masculinity. Terry Crews is a former NFL player, a uh, uh, muscle-bound man. They put him in a blonde wig and a dress with makeup on. That is a direct shot at black masculinity, at Israelite masculinity. That's the invention that they have sought out. They make you think it's, it's funny for him to right. be this way or it, it's, it's comical. Another one is Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry is yep. six foot five, 260 pounds. Big, big, big brother. Matter of fact, there it is. Scroll up a little bit. Click on that one with him dressed up like Madeira. This dude, man. Tyler Perry is six foot five, 260 pounds. Exactly. <laughs> well, look, and here's the thing. When you look at a man like Terry Crews, what am I looking over here? Look at a man like Terry Crews. Look at a man like Tyler. That's a great example, Tyler Perry. When you look at these men, right, it's the same thing that they did in the book of Willie Lynch. They're going to take Tyler Perry's. Listen, he, he, Tyler Perry has, has been through some hard times. Okay. He had built an empire because he was denied the front door coming to Hollywood. But even he, in all his blackness, and all his blackness, had to bow down for him to, oh, that's how he got off. Medea, that's how he got his fame. Through Medea, goes to jail, Medea this, Medea that. Dressing up like an old woman, okay? Ridiculous. If you take the, the strongest, smartest slaves among you, and you break them down, it's easy to let everybody else accept it. And that's exactly what this is. This is a open, masculine lynching. They lynched our masculinity in the, the face of social media, okay? Now, real quick, I want you to get me, there's a video I sent you. We, uh, we're never going to do justice. Real quick, put the picture of Dwayne Wade's son. Please, this stuff, God. Officer Micah posted this. Hey, just like you said, Kev. Yes, sir. Uh, this is modern-day buck-breaking is what it is. Just like they would take the biggest, strongest slave, and uh, the slave master will rape him in front of the whole plantation, that is what this is. Right, and check this out. Do me a favor. Before put, take this off this garbage off the screen real quick. I want you to go and find me Miami Heat championship team. Because what you're going to find is that this brother, Dwayne, Dwayne that, that, that's a, when you look at Dwayne Wade, uh, the way he used to play, dude looked like a real, like a real, like a real G. Like, like he never looked like he, he looked now. Dude was fierce on him. He was only like 6'4". Hey, Smaller you can just guy. Pull up a, uh you can pull up a picture of Dwayne Wade. Yeah, That's yeah, all you yeah. gotta do. Yeah, there you go. But look, Dwayne Wade is physically 
powerful, and he's a shorter brother, but just a powerful brother. And um, okay, now that's I want, and that's kind of a corny looking picture of him. Um, now let me get him dunking. Do, do Dwayne Wade dunking? <laughs> this dude has some rise. Dwayne Wade dunking a basketball, something like that. There you go. All right, yeah. Look, okay, look, you see that right there? I'm going to show you something. I used to like basketball. It is what it is. This dude he's dunking on is almost seven feet tall. Yeah. Dwayne Wade's like 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, Dwayne Wade was the epitome of masculinity when he played. He was rough, powerful, and strong for a smaller, uh, when you look at NBA standard. So this is, this, there's no way that his son got to the level he's at now unless somebody got to this brother. Bring it out. That's what happened. Somebody got dirt on this brother right here. And that's why he's doing what he's, he's allowing this because somebody got some real dirt on these, these guys, right? Um, let's show his son now. Show his son. All right, now let me just make a disclaimer real quick. We at Israel United in Christ do not hate this young man or his mother. Not at all. As a matter of fact, we have um, true love according to God for them. Give me um, um, Leviticus 19, verse 17. Bring it out. This is the love we have. And this is something that Dwayne Wade, I don't know what happened to him. He, he just, they got to him. This is not right, brothers. It's not right. This is wrong. And we have to stand up for it. We do not, are not physically attacking. We're not, we're saying that this, just like if we saw a picture of a man stealing a car, mm -hmm. or if a man is um, getting ready to unjustly, somebody attacking you, you kill, your, you kill a man in self-defense, there's, there's laws that you can get off of that. But if you would maliciously murder somebody, we'd be condemning the same thing, condemning the sin, not the person. Because these, these people can repent. Give me that, please. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Listen to this, y'all. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. In our minds, we do not hate Gabrielle Union. We do not hate this young man right here. This, this boy, this teenage boy, we do not hate him. Read on. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. See, the Israelites, when we came out of Egypt, when we went into Egypt, we were about 70. We came out, we were a nation, and we were a nation of families of neighbors. So to this day, even though I didn't grow up around these brothers and sisters, they're our neighbor. They are our kinsmen. Read on. And not suffer sin upon him. At the end of the day, all we can do is give them, thus saith the Lord. At the end of the day, our prayer and hope is that people like this, they change. We're not attacking their... Um, them as a people were attacking this sin, whether it be ignorance or willful. They got to stop. They got to stop before the destruction come to them by the Lord. Okay? Read it again. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. All right. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Okay. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Rebuke. Get me that scripture that says, they hateth him that rebuketh at the gate. I think it's in Amos. Yes. So what does that mean? What does that mean? They hate him that rebuketh at the gate. Why? Am I at the gate of a city, right? Is Mikael at the gate of the city and he's standing right? No. We at the gates of all Israel. This is a gateway here. We're telling y'all, and this might get back to them. This, somebody might say, oh, these guys, and it might get back to him. And if it does get back to him, this is what we talk about, young man. Read. Amos chapter 5, verse 10. This is what that means. They hate him. That rebuke it in the gate. The gates of the city, we have the highways and byways. The airwaves are going to go out to these places where the Israelites are at. Read on. And they abhor him that speaketh of rightly. We speak, thus saith the Lord, and you, you hate us. And it's not because you hate us. It's because you hate the Most High. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. They don't despise us because we have not said one thing personally about other than what they're doing wrong. And that's dressing for a young man to dress up as a woman is wrong. It's not right. It ain't right, man. Okay? 
Come on. What verse you want, Cap? Um, Amos, uh, excuse me. First Thessalonians 4, it says, he that despises, despises. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 8. He therefore that despises. Stop. So he, now we know what's talking about. He is talking about everybody, man, woman, Bible's masculine tone. Read on. He therefore that despises, despises not man. So it's not us that they're mad at. Okay, because it's not us. Read on. But God, who had also given us his Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit we have? We went into these scriptures. We realized that, hey, we're the 12 tribes of Israel. We were brought in on slave ships. We were destroyed just like they destroy our, the masculinity of our brothers in the media. We're saying, no, 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 no. It's time to come back to his commandments. And in his commandments, we cannot, we have to, um, give me Ezekiel 317. I'm going to get a couple scriptures real quick. To show where we're coming, the place where we're coming from. Because I'm telling you, this show is going to be circulated. May only be may only be four or five thousand people that watch it, whatever. And somewhere, someone's going to get mad and say, did you see what they're saying? Listen, brother, you brothers and sisters that's doing this, we don't hate you, man. We don't. We love you, thus saith the Lord, and you got to change. You know in your spirit, there's this voice in the back of your mind that's telling you, you know it's not right. And you should be ashamed of yourself. Those of you around him who really love these brothers, and it's not just this brother, by the way. There's thousands of our brothers that ca are caught up in this. We're Jeez. using him because this brother happens to be in the spotlight all throughout the media. Okay? Read. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17. Uh-huh. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Remember in 1 Thessalonians it says, he that despises despises God, not man. So we the son of man, right? Son of men, meaning we are men in this flesh. Read on. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. How do we watch? We them brothers at the gates saying, look, thus saith, stop, man, stop, stop stealing. Stop doing that. We them brothers. Read. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Hey, this is not a condemnation. This is a warning from God. This is God's word coming through the son of men, which we are the Israelites in the flesh, telling you to stop. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, you brothers, please chime in. Please chime in. Hey, I want to get one scripture to back up what you were saying, Cap. Can we get 2 Ezra 7 and 36? Because this, this is the same spirit that we rolled in that our forefathers rolled in. That's right. 2 Ezra chapter 7, verse 36. Uh-huh. Then said I, Abraham prayed first for the Sodomites. And that's the same thing we do. We pray for the Sodomites that they recover themselves from this spirit. Because it is just the spirit that is on them that they can recover from and repent of. Read. And Moses for the fathers that sinned in the wilderness. And we pray for all the sinners of our people that they recover themselves and come back to the law, statutes, and commandments of God. That's that's the whole mission. That's the whole purpose of this radio show. That's the whole purpose of all the radio shows, all the classes, all the street teachings. Is that you recover yourself from your sin and realize that you are the greatest people on the face of this earth. That's why we do this. That's the same spirit Abraham rolled in. That's why he prayed for the Sodomites. Mm. If y'all don't know that history, go, go back and read Genesis about Sodom and Gomorrah. How many times Abraham went to the Most High on their behalf. Hey, I'm going to show you. So give me Genesis 13, 13. Yes, I, I love that scripture. And I'm going to show you that um, when he, he prayed for the Sodomites, I'm going to let's, let's see what was going on back then. Because there's some real heavy, there was some, he that's why the Lord had to destroy. Remember Sodom, he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. But even before, during the time of Noah, there was a lot of evil going on as well. Genesis 13, verse 13. Moses wrote about this. Genesis 13, verse 13, please. Genesis chapter 13, verse 13. But the men of Sodom. Hold up. Say, say that again. But the men of Sodom. So the men of Sodom, what was happening? Were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. So they wasn't regular sinners. These guys in Sodom, read it again. But the men of Sodom. The men of Sodom, come on. Were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. They, before the, they was exceedingly wicked as hell. <laughs> and Abraham... And the, the Israelites who were uh, Noah, too, we prayed all we prayed for our brothers caught up in that sin. Okay, give me the scripture real quick. It says, God hates the sin and the sinner. 
Because that's the dumb, I'm going to tell you why brothers like that are allowed to stay like that. And look, at the end of the day, let the wicked be wicked and let the righteous be righteous still. The reason why um, young men like this are able to remain in that spirit is because of this. Do we have that? Psalms chapter 5, verse 5. Because you lying, terrible, horrible pastors and your fake lying churches teach that God loves the sinner and hates the sin. Garbage. God don't what? like the sin and he don't like the sinner. Because if you're a sinner, you're doing evil. So God likes the repenting Israelites. That's what he likes. You lying Christians. And we, look, me and this guy, I was a Christian for 30-something years. Yeah. We are former recovering Christian heads. Crackhead. We are, we, <laughs> we are recovering from the disease of modern-day white Jesusism. I'm, yes. It's a horrible disease. That's right. Come on. Psalms chapter 5, verse 5. Check this out. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Right. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. I like that one, too. He said, the foolish will not stand in my sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. That means it didn't say the Lord hateth iniquity because he does hate that well. He said, thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Say, God is not saying that he chooses this guy. He's saying we chose the Israelites. And if you are an adulterer, if you are a man that dresses like a woman, if you are um, a liar, a monthly prognosticator, if you are a dog on tarot card reader, if you do not repent of these things, the Lord is going to deal with you, man. And that's the mission of the show. Anyways, we, we, got, we already killed 20 minutes. Look, get me. I want Lord Jamal. Some of y'all know Lord Jamal. He was a rapper back in like the early 90s, late 80s. Um, go to Vlad TV. I ain't giving no shout out to Vlad TV, by the way. I'm just using this because I like Lord Jamal. The dude that this interview the hell with this dude. He he eat a mic. Matter of fact, I think he's I think he's uh Amalek from that. Yeah, he's a damn devil. But <laughs> Jamal got some things to say up in this. Um, we're probably gonna do a couple part show about this. There's a lot going on right now. Shot. Hey, by the way, by the way. Kwame Brown, if you happen to see this, brother, you, listen, you got the media right now. Come home. Come home to this Bible, man. Come back to the laws of God, brother. You on fire with the things you say, and you see things. You say your eyes open. You told my mama's cooking. But guess what? You need daddy's cooking, brother, That's because right. you're the Israelites, bro. You're the Israelite, man. That's and right. your mind is, you, you see the sickness of this world. All right? Use your power you got, even if you're behind the scenes making moves. I see you got your beard on your face, Brown, Kwame. All right, read. I mean, play, sorry. You know, Felicia Rashad, you know, Claire Huxtable, uh -huh. recently spoke. And this is Lord Jamal. By the way, Lord Jamal, I could tell from it, he don't like Vlad. This guy, this guy is Edom, uh, is Edomite. I think he's Amalekite. He's a, he's a, uh, I'm sorry, Amalek rather. And um, Lord Jamal is, he's probably getting paid for this, whatever. And I hope Lord Jamal does get business, whatever. But Lord Jamal is answering a question that this Edomite's asking him about black masculinity. All right. And Lord Jamal makes a lot of good points. Uh, it's a short video. We'll play. I'll ask you to stop from time to time. Go ahead. I said on behalf of uh, Bill Cosby. Okay, let's Hold go. Up. She said, forget these women. What you're seeing is, is the destruction of a legacy. Mm. And I think it's orchestrated. Mm. I don't know why or who's doing it, but it's the legacy. And it's a legacy that is so important to the culture. So without, this is Bill Cosby, right? I'm going to touch on one thing. Bill Cosby make a lot of mistakes because he dealt with women. Anytime you deal with women like that, the Lord, this judgment, it is judgment of the Most High. But Bill Cosby did a lot for positive black imagery. One of the first things he did was the fat, show called Fat Albert. And even before he did a show at Fat Albert, he did things for the black community with um, early times with, with eating programs. And he did a lot of um, excellent things even before his comedy and Jello pudding and even before the Cosby show. Then they took... And look, I'm not, I'm not saying Bill Cosby is, 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 is righteous. What I'm saying is that in a, in, in a simple mindset, what he did, I remember I used to come home, and I can't wait to watch the Cosby show. 
Even if I was sad or depressed, I can't wait for the cosmic. Because I saw a, a, a doctor and a lawyer living in a brownstone in a nice neighborhood who could speak clearly and still knew they was black, had a black wife. You understand what I'm saying? Like, they destroyed it. And Felicia's, Felicia did what she could do to stand up for, for, for the man. It's judgments of God. All right, go ahead, Mikael. Hey, to your point, uh, Cap, yeah, judgment is of God, but the way they drug him through the mud, uh, not even letting that show play in syndication anymore, right. goes into the whole process of destroying black masculinity. Public because lynching. black masculinity is raising your family, right. marrying a black woman, That's right. showing positive uh, role models. That is black masculinity. And they... That's one way that they destroyed that because the whole reason they even attacked him anyway is because they didn't want him to buy NBC and put on more positive black television. Right. That's right. Right. That's Glad that public read. lynching. Uh, that's that public lynching y'all talked about. And uh, another thing I want to mention too is um, we spoke about it earlier when we was talking before the radio show, but the the silent spirit is still here today because when you think about it, if any public figure come out today and say. Dwayne Wade, what you doing is wrong. Right. They will march in the street, protest. That man will lose endorsement deals, whatever he may lose. They gonna come in the street just how um just how uh they did it back in the day. Bring him out that we may know him and march in the street. That's what they gonna do to the if a brother speak up nowadays. This. Hey, play that little boosty sound clip real quick. Come on now, dog. This sound clip right here. Come on. This sound clip right here was in response to Dwayne Wade letting his son wear a dress. Right. And they drug Lil Boosie. I'm not saying that he's righteous. He's not righteous at all. He got white Jesus on the brain, too. But they drug him through the mud because he stood up and said Dwayne Wade was wrong for allowing his son to become his daughter. And the Bible says that. Right. And that was when he was uh 12 years old. Boosie said, hey, bro, he might decide. He said, don't cut his D off. He might decide, you know, when he's 16, 17, that he might want to actually, you know, turn the other way, you know? Right. And hold up. That's a good point because there are, and we can find some videos, there are people, men, who had that change who, what, uh, only, I can't, I don't know the exact one. You have to find it, who are saying they regret it and they wish they, uh, they wish they could have been a little bit more mature in, in, uh, before they made that decision. So, and they're not gonna give them the public spotlight because it, it is, an, is, an, is an, a spiritual power in high places that's behind this, bro. High places behind this. But let's, let's um, you got the little boozy for Mikael? Yeah, we, we, they, oh, he, he, played played the, he played the clip already. Hear. All right, Lord Jamal. So first he touched on Bill Cosby. He brings up some salient points. Bill Cosby, they destroyed him, right? I'm gonna tell you right now, y'all go back. I don't even. I don't know. You can find a Cosby show right now, maybe on YouTube, no, you, maybe. Yeah, probably YouTube. That's about it. But I'm telling you, man, it was it was it was a powerful show. It was very uplifting. It was they were black educated. They still lived in New York City. They lived in um, a black neighborhood for predominantly. Um, and uh, he he she went he went to Hill House. It was uh, historically black colleges that they graduated from. They would show tradition and remember. Um, Cliff and Claire's parents would be in it. So you saw mm -hmm. a grandparents. Uh, all, matter of fact, it was four generations. When Sandra, the light-skinned sister, had a child, they were great grand. It showed four generations of black folks. And that was in the 80s. So guess what? Some of them lived um, through Jim Crow. Yes. And they were, it was too much a slap in these devil's faces. Okay. Was it done 100% of speed of Lord? No, it was not. It was not. Uh, play on Lord Jamal. Culture. Someone is determined to keep Bill Cosby off TV, and it's worked. All his contracts have been canceled. This show represents America to the outside world. This was the American family, and now you're seeing it destroyed. Why? Because the black man was the head of that American family. And now as we discredit, as we try to discredit all black men and make them look like brutes and beasts, we have to go to the, the black archetype of fatherhood, which in this country was Bill Cosby. Mm -hmm. You see? So like I said, it's not just about Bill Cosby. When you compound it with Bill Cosby and Ray Rice and Adrian Peterson 
and you know, and then you got the cat calling videos, and then you got you know Eric Garner who was supposedly resisting arrest, and Mike Brown who who robbed some duchess beforehand, supposedly allegedly, and this all starts to look like you know, and just and then compound that on just the general feeling of young black men being aggressive and all that. Give me First Corinthians chapter eleven, and then I want you to hold. Sirach 3. I'm going to show you what happens. What Lord Jamal said um, is, is 100% on point. And he's right what he's saying. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, because God is a God of order, and he put the black man at the leadership position of his household. Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I will have you know that the head... Stop, read again. See, I, this, this is why the Bible is true. We never pay attention. Watch, watch what he said. But I will have you know. He said, hey, I'm a, but I'm going to have you know. Mm-hmm. He's making a point. I'm going to have you know just in case you forgot. If you don't know, now you know. Read it again. But I will have you know. I'm going to let you brothers know. That the head of every man the is. The leader of the man, the head. It ain't talking physically about. That means I'm a man. I got another. It means I got two heads. Is the head on top of me? No. It's talking about a leader. It's something more you follow. Read on. That the head of every man is Christ. The black mm-hmm. Messiah, the Savior of the nation of Israel. Read on. And the head of the woman is the man. We know it's not literal because how can a woman have a man's head? Does she, does she walk around with like a pumpkin? <laughs> does she have it on top of her head? It's showing you there's an order of God. And when you destroy that, the whole thing, that's why it crumbles. That's okay. why, listen. He's so smart. If I can take away their, their records, that's a record. The Cosby Show is a record. Yeah. It's a record. Yes, sir. These scribes did this just like these devils are taking. Uh, I remember the first time I heard it was forced migration of African Americans. That's how they start the BS. Okay? Now they're trying to, um, the 1619 Project, give me that 1619 Project, hold that on the back burner. That sister is a bad sister. Very knowledgeable. Okay, I'm going to get that in a minute. Give me Sirach 3. I'm going to look at it. Sirach chapter 3, verse 2. Hold up. Let me, I'm going to just, I'm going to look at it because I don't want to read the whole thing. Uh, we, we bring his scriptures out tonight, y'all. Um, Sirach chapter 3. I'm going to show you, this is why, listen, how are we, and I'm average, I, I'm not even, I'm not slick in, with like Deacon Ithon and, um, but how am I able to know all this? A regular dude, because we study this, the Lord opened our understanding. As I'm speaking, the spirit is moving to these scriptures. That's like right. the movie Avatar, the cartoon Avatar, they stick their tails in the tree of life. This is our spirits are stuck in this Bible. We see stuff, we go here to here to here. That's why Mikael was, boom. Oh, Abraham, I remember he prayed for the Sodomites. We don't hate our brothers, man. We're trying to wake them up. Read. Sirach chapter 3, verse 2. Watch this. For the Lord had given the father honor over the children. You see that? Did the honor come from Claire Huxtable? She brought um, support to the family. The honor came from Bill in the house. It's like the honor come from the man in the house. All right, read on. For the Lord had given the father honor over the children. <laughs> Esau, you, you, you don't tell God, what the order is. That's why at the end of the day, Revela- give me Revelation 18 real quick. Hold that. See, the problem with y'all is y'all don't understand that this, this kingdom is going to stop one day. And when it stops, you're going to see all that evil. The Lord finally heard the prayers of the Israelites. Think he did back in Egypt. Yep. You want to say something, Mikael? No. All right, Revelation. Give me verse 1, and we're going to jump to 3, 4. Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. Listen good. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven. So after these things, another angel came down from heaven. And this angel is described in, I think it was Ezekiel 1. The angels are described also in, is it Matthew 28, as they made brothers turn to dead men. They were so fierce in their countenance, people were shocked. Read. 
And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven. Right. Having great power. What? Having great power. And most I ain't playing. He just holding back his power. Read on. And the earth was lightened with his glory. The, the earth was lightened when the angel came down with his power. And that's one of God's angels. So what you think when the sun come back? Mm. You, you crazy as hell. The same when you put him to death. The same every time you destroy these black men's lives and crucify them in the media. You don't think the God of heaven is taking freaking record? Okay. All right. You want to keep. Just imagine somebody mess with your children, right? And you, you got to sit back and watch everything. All right. Oh, yeah, you did that. All right, cool. That's why we got to get our minds right so we can escape this, this stuff. Read on. Verse 2. Yep. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying. Right, so now this angel, right, I can't do it justice. So the angel come down with power, and he cried mightily. What he said? Babylon the great is falling. Can you imagine a big black angel coming down with power? I, I wish I could say it powerful enough. He said, say it, read it again. Babylon the Great is falling. Like a fierce power. Babylon, like just freaking mean as crap. Babylon the Great is just powerful. And that's it. It's a wrap. Babylon the Great is falling. Read. Babylon the Great is falling. Mm -hmm. It's falling and it's become the habitation of devils. Right, because you, you, you don't tell me that, that you don't know that devils run this. A lot of black people still see this place as the habitation habitation of angels. There's going to come a time when everybody going to see the evil. It, remember during the time of Sodom, it got so bad it was beating down doors. Matter of fact, pull up New Central Park 5. There's an article where a man got raped by five other men in New York City. Uh, what? Yeah, exactly. What? You damn right. <laughs> pull it up, bro. This is how we know that we living in the last doggone days. Pull it up. Tell him ASAP, Deacon ASAP. Uh, I want the new one. Not, that's the old Central Park Five. Type in, um, man gets raped by five, and I hate to bring this out, but men get raped by five men. It just came to my I just remember hearing about this on the, on the news. Um, no, that's, that's, some, that's in Spain. Two days ago. Do that one. Okay. Look, hold up real quick. There's stuff in Belgium. Now go back. That, that's not it. Um, come on, man. Right there. Gang. Um, yeah, right here. New York Post. We're going to read this. We Listen, we're running out of time already. So um, go ahead. Iran, do me a favor. I want you to read that real quick. Yes, sir. Cops investigate gang rape claims in Central. Um, move that ad, please. Since you part. Now, typically, when we hear, and by the way, rape is wrong. The Bible speaks about it, okay? Um, the Typically, you hear about gang rapes, you hear about a woman. And that, that, that's 100% wrong. But now, there, and, 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 and it, there are other examples, but it is more of a rare thing to see what we're about to get into. Read. All right. Cops are investigating claims that a 19-year-old man was sexually assaulted in Central Park early Wednesday, police said. So the you might think, first of all, well, maybe five women rolled up on him, right? Throw him down because that's a man's getting allegedly um, molested. Read on. <laughs> the alleged victim told cops he was walking inside the park just before 1 a.m. That's why you brothers, man, the scriptures say two are better than one. I'm not going to be walking in no park by myself. Number one, it's a teenager. You brothers, when you roll around, make sure you got somebody with you, man. Two is better than one. Yes, sir. Roll with brothers with you. Do not go places by yourself. You're living in a wicked, wicked place. All right? Right on. At West 77th Street and West Drive, when he saw five men sitting on the park bench. Uh-uh. Read really? it. He saw what? He saw five men. Sitting on the park bench. So he's like, all right, whatever. Five guys, I'm winding my business. Read on. Police sources say the men then got up and followed the alleged victim. He told cops he said he fell and was sexually assaulted by two of the men. Now, I don't believe that. I believe all five of them was involved in that. And I'm going to show you how wicked it is. Let's say it was two. 
At one point, what do the other three say? Yo, all right, listen, stop. They all were in cahoots with that, showing you the sickness of the mind of the black man in America. And these were, I, I, can, I can guarantee you these were not Asians. I can guarantee you these were not Arabs. These, well, I'm going to make a, uh, a guess that these were black and Hispanic men. Real? Unfortunately, I pray it, it, it is what it is. Read on. The alleged victim say the five male suspects, about 30 years old, ran off after the incident. The victim crossed path with the police as he left the park and did not report what had happened, according to the police sources. But the but he soon came across the transit cop and first say that he was robbed. Right. Why would he first say he was robbed? You know how embarrassing that would have to be mm -hmm. to have to go to a person of authority to share that with somebody of Real. course you gonna it shows you that the level um these guys are mon these are monsters and guess what there was most of them and i could i'm not i'm not making a broad gen most of them were raised by single black and latino women Real. right now real quick hold that go back to surat three i'm going to show you what happens um surat three verse let's see here um Yes, start at verse 8 and 9, 8 and 9. Sirach, chapter 3, verse 8. Freedom. Honor thy father and thy mother. Right, no, no, the reason why I went here is because it talks about in one house, there was always a father and mother. That's right. In the household. Read on. Honor thy father and mother both in word and deed. So in word, yes, mommy. Yes, yes, yes dad. Yes, mom. Right, you're going to say yes, but the deed part is you actually do the action. You honor your mother and father both in word and deed. Right? Clean up your room. Yes, mama. You come back home. I mean, daddy's at work. The room's clean. That's deed. All right, read on. That a blessing may come upon thee from them. Right, so a blessing, you, they're being raised in the laws of God. And knowing that, number, how about this? How about if the multitude does evil and you, you're supposed to be the one to stand up? And one of them should have said, you know what? I got a spirit. Of, this is wrong. Everybody stop right now. I'm calling it. What? No one did that. No one fought. No one was taught the laws of God at all. The laws were just out the damn window. Read. Verse 9. For the blessing of the father establishes the houses of children. This is why we go back with what Lord Jamal said. The blessing of the father is. What is that? For the blessing of the father establishes the houses of children. This premise of the whole class the blessings of the father establishes let me say, establish the houses of children Freedom. the way that healthy god-fearing children are established is when there's a father and he's blessing the house by keeping these commandments and yes i get the cosby show was not they didn't know it was israelites they didn't claim but they did everything else according to a positive black household and they destroyed that and i'm gonna show you how it happens read on but the curse. Wait, wait, hold up. But what? But the curse. So the curse, come on. Of the mother. Of the mother. Rooted out foundations. Rooted out foundations. And without a foundation, all this crap is going on. All this crap is going on in this society, man. And look, and let me tell you another thing. Because Dwayne Wade is not taking his role as the father in establishing. That's why the curse, the mother, is, is rooting out. Dwayne, listen, Dwayne, if that was me, listen, you want to what? All right, listen, I'll tell you what. Boom, boom, you can take him and him, buy, you want half? You can take three quarters, I'll build something new. You're going to do it this, that's it. He didn't have the strength. He let the, 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 the rule or the rooted down by his wife. Right. Yep. Terrible. You Come know who else did that? Now. Magic Johnson. Yes, let's get that. Beautiful. Pull up, pull up EJ. Pull up EJ. This is probably damn worse. It, God this is this not might be worse. You guilty for that? Because guess what? It is worse because with Dwayne Wade, that's actually not that little boy's biological mother. Gabrielle Union is not his mother. So that's like his little best friend or whatever now. Because the real mama, the real mama, they tried to paint her as being crazy when she was. Homeless at one point in time, 
and she was trying to get Dwayne Wade to take care of her and her two sons. Wow. What Dwayne Wade did was took his two sons and left her alone and then married Gabrielle Union. Now one of his sons is a daughter. But look at Magic Johnson and his son. While Magic Johnson was off winning NBA titles and sleeping with half of the United States. What the hell is this? Cookie was at home raising their son to be a daughter. Just what the scripture said. Read that again. Verse 9. Sirach chapter 3 verse 9. For the blessing of the father establish it the houses of children. Uh But the curse of the mother rooted out foundations. So that was a rooted out foundation right there. Can I get a scripture? Uh, Proverbs 22 and 15. Yeah, Proverbs 22 and 15 real quick. Because at the end of the day, if we're the fathers, we're the parents of these kids, they're going to have foolish thoughts. If my 12-year-old comes to me and says, hey, I want to drink bleach. Oh, well, that, that's what you want to do. Hey, I want to be Spider-Man and jump off a roof. Hell No. Hell no, you can't drink no bleach. Hell no, you can't uh, jump off no damn roof. You ain't Spider-Man. Read that. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 15. Go ahead. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. At, I believe it was at 12 years old. He came and said, uh, Daddy, I want to be a girl. That's a child. And guess what? That's foolishness. Read on. But the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. So like Cap was saying, you want to do what? No, we're going to correct that. That's foolishness. That's it. Oh, it's Ibrahim. That's a real life scripture for you, huh? Samuel yeah. came to you and said some crazy stuff, huh? Hey, I got, I got a son. <laughs> My son said, "Hey, I want to hey. play. I want to play with that knife." That's foolishness. You what understand? Yes. Yeah. Hey, let's let's let let's use some examples. I like that. I like the bleach. Right? Check this out. It, uh, if you say that a man wants to dress like a woman, right? That's the law, uh, Deuteronomy 22, verse 5, right? And a man wants to lay with a man, that's uh, Leviticus 18, verse 22, um, Leviticus 20, verse 13, right? Let's use a lesser example and then an extreme example. Let's do, um, get me Leviticus chapter, uh, Exodus chapter 20. Let's do this. Start this. So let's say a boy is well taken care of, has everything he needs, um, three showers, uh, three meals a day, whatever, place to eat, uh, sleep, uh, not wanting for the basic um, needs of life. Let's read Exodus chapter 20 and read, I'm going to make my point in a minute, read verse 15. Exodus chapter 20 verse 15. Thou shalt not steal. So you, your boy in front of you tries to steal something from a store. Mm-hmm. So, oh, you feel like stealing? Um, okay, just just don't get caught. I know that's the feeling you're going through. Come it's on it's now, complete mad. What are you, crazy? You better whoop that ass. This. Number one, I'll call the cops on him. Yeah, my son about to, yup, th- that's him. Damn Bring demon up. right there. And then I'm taking everything away from his ass. And that's breaking the law of God that everyone would agree with, right? Even the so-called Christians, everyone can agree with that. You don't steal people's stuff. All right, great. Now, let's get Leviticus chapter 18. You're going to learn today. You know how you know they agree with that? Thou shalt not steal? Because it's in their law. Right, yes, yes. So I'm going to read a law that is, uh, yeah, here we go. Um, Let's read verse 18 and 22, and then we're going to jump. So it's going to get to the point. Look, I hope that I'm wrong. I think it's going to get to the point like this one day. And look, this is an extreme example. You might say, well, you're kind of going a little bit overboard. Um, uh, priest at IUIC New Orleans. You go a little bit overboard. Okay, let's see. Leviticus 18, 22. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. Okay. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. Right. So let's, 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 let's I'm going to make two points. So. If you got an elephant or a giraffe, or let's just say a hippopotamus, if another hippopotamus that's a male or a giraffe does something with another, what what did it do f- for the sake circle of life? What what did it do? No life was created. No, what what did it do? It's confusion, right? So a man with a man is confusion. Right. 
A man dressing like a woman is confused. Now let's read the next verse. Here's my point. Next verse. It is abomination. Verse 23. Neither shall thou lie with any beast. Stop. Read the first word slow. Neither. Read it again. Neither. One more time. Neither. So he's, he's, neither is a connective word. He's like, yo, this is some disgusting stuff. Neither, continuation, read on. Neither shall thou lie with any beast. So now this is humans, the Israelites, lying with beasts, read on. To defile thyself therewith. It is defiling just like a man with a man defiles. A woman with a woman, read on. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. Now, let's, let's, let's parallel it. So, Dwayne Wade's son comes to his father. Dad, thank you for allowing me to do this. But I got something else going on. Um, they got this baby cow that I really, uh, disclaimer, I'm making it the extreme example that I really am attracted to. Can we just bring the cow in the house? I, d I just want it to, to stand over there. Well, I don't know. So is that the next step? Y your son or your daughter wants to lay with a damn a, 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 a cow or a dog? And that's how he feels. Is that, is that the next step? Because I think what's going to take is for some crap like that to happen for everybody just to realize that this right. place is some wicked, 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 terrible place. Maybe that's what needs to happen. Because we just read a law, and we read uh, two chapters back in Exodus. Now, should not, everybody agrees with that. But the same laws that are in this Bible that are found, by the way, bestiality is a, was against the law in the United States of America. So the biblical and judicial laws are based upon this holy Bible. Mm -hmm. So this is how you know we end that place, man. We're, we're using examples, man. We, we ain't even got through a quarter of the content. Magic Johnson, by the way, pull up Magic Johnson's son. That's a big man. He ain't no five foot eight like Spud Webb. This dude is like a friggin' monster. I think he's like six eight or six nine. Oh so just gosh, like, he's, he might be the same height as his dad, six six nine. Big linebacker. DJ Johnson, Go, Wikipedia, this brother. But to your point, like you were talking about the animals, it's it's not natural. You don't see effeminate animals or. Or, or homosexual animals, so you know this is against nature. Hey, ah, and uh, can I turn you back off what you said off to me, Kyle? Um, Romans one and twenty six, real quick. I'm gonna make yep. it quick. Because off to me, Kyle, just say it's against nature. Same thing, uh, cat butt out. It's un you're not gonna see no hippopotamus laying down with male hippopotamus. Read that real quick. Romans chapter 1, verse 26. Go ahead. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. You hear what it says? Vile affections. Read on. For even their woman did change the natural use into that which is against nature. It say their natural use, which is against nature. So for, um, go ahead, Officer Mikael. I'm, I'm just looking at this Wikipedia article, and this, this, this pops out at me. It says he was raised in the Pentecostal Christian faith. <laughs> and and they, they, the foundation of their religion is, is the Bible, right? It's supposed to be. And you just, read, hold up, in the spirit, you just read something out of the New Testament. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. And during a time that Jesus Christ had left the earth at that time. Yes, sir. Hmm. That's right. Can you, can you read that one more time? So it's, six two. So it says, he, that's against nature. All right, then read on, read on the verse, uh, read, jump to verse 28. Romans chapter 1, verse 28. Oh, verse 29, read on. Verse 29. Being filled with all unrighteousness, uh -huh. fornication. So it says being fulfilled with unrighteousness and fornication, that's fornication. And when you read on down to verse 31, it tells you not, a, not just those people that do it, but also those people that have pleasure in them. So everybody that's supporting that vile lifestyle, right. everybody that's in so-called Zion Wade corner, guess what? You just a partake of it as well. So you're going to get dealt with when Christ returns as well. Right. We, we, by the way, we, we're not doing nothing. All we're doing is Ezekiel 3 said, we're warning you, we're showing you love, and sincerely saying there's a solution. You have to stop. You have to go to the Most High, acknowledge your evil. What you're doing is evil. Stop, change your ways, 
come back to the Father. If you do not, that's on you and the judgment that comes in that day. Not now. It's time to repent. Matthew 4, 17, real quick. That's right. Let's see what a brother who looked like this man right here said to us. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. From that time. And what I mean by that is in reference to his physical characteristics. I'm not saying Christ looked like he was a, um, a man that dressed like that. I'm saying that this is a black man and Christ was a black man. All right. And this is how far we have fell. Okay, read. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Uh -huh. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Because I'm going to show you something. If, if we, as, let's just imagine, uh, you have to do this every once in a while. If black men, righteous black men, ruled and governed this country, you would never see nothing like this. Because the imagery that you would have from the time you was a little boy would be mm -hmm. celebrated. Whether, whatever you did, would be that would be the standard. As black boys come up, the, the schoolings would be geared to help them. The education field would be geared towards them. Everything in society would be geared to help support and develop their growth. The reason why brothers do that is because they're not seeing positive male imagery. And what they're seeing is a confusion in the earth. And they're seeing that gets the respect. That gets the admiration. So their experiment, that goes back to that evil invention. They, they seek after many inventions. Okay? Um, we got, the, we got, and you said he's 6'2"? Yeah, he's 6'2". Uh, he's a big brother. 6'2", he's a tall brother. Uh, not as big as Magic Johnson. Now, go back to Lord Jamal real quick. Unless you had something. You had something, Miguel? Hey, real quick, because it said he was born June 1992. Look up when Magic Johnson was diagnosed with uh, mm. AIDS. Just uh, look it up when he made his announcement. Oh, wait a correlation. <laughs> Jordan. Yeah. This is just, just, I want to, I want to see something here. Right. Because I believe it was, it was Ooh. 91. Hey, hey, bro. So, Magic Johnson makes an announcement that he has HIV in 1991. At this time, the late 80s, early 90s, this disease was a death sentence. And less than a year later, his son is born, who grows up to be a sodomite. Now, I'm not saying nothing, but we know in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, we wrestle against uh, spiritual wickedness in high places. Right. Read that. Damn. And by the way, again, before you get that, uh, Magic Johnson, you brothers, that if it, you never know who might watch this. We, we, we have love for all our brothers, the, the basketball players, um, sports stars, actors, all the uh, children that have gone astray. Listen, come back home. Come back to the yeah. Most High. Keep his commandments. Um, you're not condemned yet. There's a, there's a time and chance for you to change your ways before the fire come, before... Uh, the destruction comes to this place that is allowed, which you're about to read in Ephesians. It's a high place. The people that run this show, mm -hmm. this run this place, it's mastermind. It's a thought process that's going on. It's all strategic. Read that. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, mm -hmm. but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. So the topic of the show is the destruction of black masculinity, right? So think about it. Magic Johnson in the 80s was the epitome of black masculinity, even in his wickedness because, you know, all the women that he dealt with, you know, our wickedness, we looked at that as being masculine. Right. You know, he was the star player of the hottest team, Showtime Lakers, man. If y'all don't know, man, a lot of these millennials, Magic, Magic Johnson, before Jordan, was the man. Yep. That's why they call him Magic, because he makes magic happen on the court. And as a result of that, instead of using that role to uplift his people, what he did is he got caught up in the, in, in the life of a lot of different women, like a lot of these stars do. And guess what happens? They get things on you. Mm-hmm. 
to have stuff over your head. That's why these, a lot of these black actors, man, uh, it is, hey, we're going to touch more. Go ahead, Mikael. So, this, you no, know, he's at the, at the, at his height of his powers, now all of a sudden he contracts HIV. Supposedly, me, I'm I'm skeptical. I'm gonna say I'm skeptical. I'm not speaking for everybody else. I'm skeptical he even had it, but he contracts HIV, right? And he's still alive, by the way. Mm -hmm. Th um, twenty nine years later, after he thirty years later, he's still all right. Yeah. So supposedly con contracts HIV, right? So we're destroying black masculinity. You know, the whole idea of the black man and his prowess. Now he's weakened because he has the disease. Mind you, like Cap said, 30 years later, he's still here. But now his son is still destroying the image of black masculinity because he's out here six foot two, six three, whatever he is, wearing high heels and dresses. Hey, do me a favor. I thank you for finding Officer Akiem. Get me that. Um, it's an article from News. Uh, hyphen medical dot net, and one of that we mentioned it earlier. Thank you for finding that. There are not, you know, a couple, three, four people. There are hundreds of people, um, and we're going to check the source. Who regret um, trans people regret changing their gender. Mm. All right. So, and and guess what? Just like for example, uh, when I was in the military years and years and years ago, a long time ago. 25 years ago, I was going through training. And one of the things they do before they release you on your first liberty, right, which is your, your time away from training, is they show you a video of all the diseases you could catch in your private areas. And it will make you throw. Deacon Abio did that one time on a Fix Your Face yes. Friday. Made you throw up in your mouth, right? So once you see that, you're like, well, damn, I. I, maybe I don't want to go out and deal with um, the hoes out there. Why don't they make it a law that if, and they should make it more than this, that they got to watch these videos of all the people that are saying, we did, who the hell is Dwayne Wade? Dwayne Wade can't tell his son, go ahead. Dwayne Wade never went to, how about tell the people that did the doggone thing that said don't do it, it was a mistake. How about letting them talk to them? How come this ain't, how come this is not on mainstream CBS news? How can Magic Johnson and all this crap make it, but this hundreds of people regret doing it? Why isn't this on? Because right. of Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Spiritual wickedness in high places, they want, and guess what? And well, a, a lot of Mizzy saw doing this, but I'm telling you right now, you're going to see the Israelites are going to be the ones that's on front stage from this. What, you see right. Magic Johnson and Dwayne, why is these little black boys being the ones that's in the public light? Well, I don't see that. Well, Jenna, this dude... And you know that about Bruce Jenner, by the way? Yes, he was a white man, but let me tell you something. That was a masculine dude. Josh, you remember him? One of decathlon for a white boy. We was like, this dude is bad. Yeah. On the Wheaties box. Yeah. The white man masculinity. And they're attacking masculinity across the board. But they, white people got Bruce Jenner. We got a million examples. It's a damn embarrassment. Okay? <laughs> Read. This is from News Medical Life S Sciences. Now, um, check the source of this, but um, so Sally Robertson, B.CS, is a title. I believe that she has some sort of degree. Uh, yeah, bachelor's in science. So she's, uh, she's fairly educated, and it is a News Medical Life Sciences. And at the end, there's probably a bibliography or a list of sources if she is professional that she just didn't make this up or like a uh, narrative. Uh, if you're gonna quote things, um, there's probably facts and people were interviewed in other primary and secondary sources before you just start writing things down, right? Let's see what's going. This was written about what? Oh, two and a half years ago. Go ahead and read. Let's go back up. Hundreds of trans people regret changing their gender, says trans activists. So hold up, and this is a trans activist that's saying this, meaning, this person is still actively involved in the movement. She's, this is obviously an objective transgender. Saying, so you know what? There's a lot of people, hundreds, that are like, we, we didn't want to do it. So, wish we did. Why don't they show this? 
to these little 12-year-olds. Wait, let me ask a question. Is a 12-year-old or a 13-year-old, 14 are they in a position to even drive a motor vehicle? Nope. So what the hell makes you think that they can uh, 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 mess with their private parts? You can't even drink liquor until you're 18. I use you can't even have sex consensually in some states 18, some states 16. So you gotta wait to 16 to have consensual sex, but at 12 and 13, you can make up your mind if you a girl. You see how you see how crazy that sounds? You see how you see how crazy that sounds. So at 12 or 13 years old, you can make a decision that you want to be a girl if you're a boy, or you want to be a boy if you're a girl. But you cannot vote for the president of the United States. Not that we advocate voting, because we don't. Right. But you can't vote for the president of the United States until you're 18 years old. But at 12, you can change what God created? The, the, hey. You see the stupidity in that? Hey, with driver's license, you could always not drive the car that day. Or you can just choose not to vote or vote for somebody else. Or with, with drinking, you could choose not to. But once you, once you make that change, that's it. And it, it's a sick conversation. Let's read on. A trans activist woman who detransitioned in 2018 has sparked controversy by claiming that many people who have gender reassignment regret the decision and want to return to their original sex. Now let's read on. Charlie Evans, age 28 years, from Newcastle, United Kingdom, says hundreds of people who want to return to their original gender have contacted her since she announced her detransition and stopped taking her hormone therapy. I'm going to show you something. This is in the UK, right? So once one person did that, all the other people that were thinking that in the back scenes were like, I got a voice. I need to speak my... There's a lot more people out there that... I bet you if you could look at it, I bet you most of them, I bet you most of them are regretting. I bet you most of them regret it because in their spirit, and I bet you God puts it on to say, you know what? You done messed up. And this is a warning. And you know what? This should be, this should be in the elementary school. Yes. Not Jimmy had two dads. If you're going to teach that, to teach this too. Right. Jimmy had two dads. One of them changed the gender. And now one of Jimmy's dads wish he could be back to being a dog on man again. Or vice versa. Okay? Read. Evans was born female but decided to live as a male for almost 10 years before detransitioning. She says she has received a huge response since announcing that she would no longer be identifying as a male or taking her testosterone therapy. So in order to maintain that masculinity, she had to take an unnatural uh, hormone to make her feel like a him. That's, that's, that's not right. Read on. Hundreds of people, just 30 in the Newcastle area alone. So hundreds of people, 30 in Newcastle alone, before she, and with all due respect, he that is now she again, before she said that, there were 30 people, and they thought that too. So just showing you there's another, there's another side to the coin in this transgender. that there, She's an activist saying, look, you better make sure you know, because there's a lot of people that, that wish they didn't do it. Read on. Hundreds no, of and, and we're wrong. We're evil to say that children who are not old enough to vote, drive a car, or have consensual sex are convincing their parents that it's okay to do that when there are grown adults that hundreds of them, probably more thousands, that are saying, don't do it. And this, you got to search for this, but the other stuff, it's all in your face. All in the newspaper, all on YouTube. Everywhere you go, you see this. The hell is this? Come on, man. Read on. Hundreds of people, just 30 in the Newcastle area alone, have contacted her seeking help. She says either asking her to speak out or to help them find support over their decision to detransition. So remember, transitioning is when you transfer from one gender to another. Mm -hmm. So detransitioning is saying, oh, no, I made a mistake. Let me go back to what. God gave me. Even if you don't believe the Bible, it's wrong. Something in their spirit said, this is wrong. It's something in the spirit said, this is evil. And they, that's a process. D, um, 
what is that word? D is, is repentance because you're acknowledging your evil and you're going back. And that's why if you say, okay, before you play with matches, right, talk to somebody who's been through a house fire. Right. Talk to somebody who burnt the field down. Talk to somebody who, uh, um, uh, I'll never forget a story. Um, when I was a kid, it told me that somebody blew their hand off from fireworks, and it always stuck with me. I never wanted to mess with fire. Other than little, them little sparky, I never wanted to mess. I never wanted to throw no M80. I never, I never did that. So, uh, that story that when I heard that, man, yo, that could happen to me. Shoot, you know? So it's the same doggone thing, right? Read on. This is a quote from Charlie Evans herself. I'm in communication with 19 and 20 year olds who have had full gender reassignment surgery who wish they hadn't and their dysphoria hasn't been relieved. They don't feel better for it. They don't know what their options are now. Damn, 19 to 20 years old. They got more than half of their life to to live wondering. Oh, uh, hold up. Know. Look, watch this. Read, read, read. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is pissing me off. Read the quotes, please. Another quote from Charlie Evans. They tend to be around their mid-20s. They, meaning the people that are regretting or de-transitioning? Um, okay, watch what it says. They tend to be around their mid-20s. So they're still um, young adults. Read on. They're mostly female. They're mostly female. Come on. And mostly some sex attracted. Mostly. Same sex attracted. Yep. And often autistic as well. That's some messed up stuff. Autism is a neurological disorder. So if you are uh, an autistic child, you're under care of adults. You understand? Because whether you be a high-functioning autistic or low-functioning. So that adult is 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 actually allowing that to happen. You're supposed to be a caregiver. Come on now, yes, dog. That's, 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 that's sick, and that goes back to your point in Romans. You people that support murderers, liars, and people that lay with beasts, and you Bring support this, there's going to be a judgment for you. But not, we're not saying it. We're just, we just read out the Bible. And th the answer is, listen, you got to stop. You be the voice of reason. Don't do it. And the, look, these people want a voice. Listen, I was confused. I did the change. I'm wrong. And I'm, I'm speaking about these people in the article, right? They're saying it's wrong. Just like you see people that used to be crackheads, and they go and they recover, and they tell their story, but don't, don't go there. I've been to that dark place as a crackhead, right? Or people that go to jail, and they scare people straight. You ever seen the show where the big, big brother come out, and he scream at people, and then they bring them to the jail for like eight hours, and they, and they scare them straight. You yeah. don't want to go to jail. That's what this is. Okay, read. There is a lack of information about how many people regret transitioning. The number of young people seeking gender transition is at the highest it's ever been. The highest, and this was 2019, so if it was 2019 at the highest it's ever been, we're getting more media coverage of it. That means it's higher than it was in two years ago. Watch this. But little is reported about how many of them regret the decision later. And that's the point. If so many, hundred, probably thousands of them that do this are saying it's wrong. We were wrong. Why, let's think about, why isn't this making major, major news? When Dwayne Wade's son, uh, Lord's Will the Brother Repent, he makes all kind of news. How is that possible? Well, if you love your son, and that's what I might do. Let's say, if, let's say if I kick my son out the house, right? The, I'm, I'm Dwayne Wade. Gabby, listen, you want to choose it? Oh, I'm done with you, right? I'm going to be sending every article to my son. Listen, I know you ain't going to listen to me. Why don't you listen to them? Listen to what they're saying. Hundreds of people. And you, you still want to do that? You still going to listen to your mother? You still going to listen? You going to still listen to these people in the media? Right. You better listen to them. They went through it. You better, and that's love. What are you doing? Yep. You going to drink bleach? Nigga, you crazy? Come on, man. This is why we, 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 our job is very important. We are the last line of defense for righteousness on this planet Earth, brothers. And this is why, you know, you, 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 all of us should be um, justifiably angry at the things we're seeing. And we're taking a shift more towards this, but we have so much more we, we're going to do. We're going to continue on next week. But um, do me a favor. Before I forget, uh, we mentioned the... Um, 
Um, finish Lord Jamal real quick, and I want to, one more before I. Uh, we're going to come right back to that. I want Lord Jamal. Lord Jamal says something else. We could do a whole show in his one video. That type of shit. It paints a certain psychological picture. And that's what the fuck they're trying to do. And now the only ones that are going to be accepted and felt to be not brutes are the more effeminate black men. They're going to be the ones put up on the pedestal. And the ones that are the ones that don't catcall women because they're catcalling men. Okay, but uh, <laughs> they're not going to. You notice you don't see a lot from Lord Jamal. Lord, like you said earlier, obviously he ran. He's listen. He's this is a real uh, brother. Listen, Lord Jamal, he won't make no more records. Lord Jamal, this is out there, and Lord Jamal ain't. Uh, if he'll get his record deal, if he apologizes and and, and stands up, and say I was wrong. Lord Jamal is saying truth. Okay, mm -hmm. he's speaking truth to power, and what's going on here is that he's saying things that a lot of other rappers wish that they would say. Like like these other rappers, they will lose their endorsement deals. They will lose these things. Like they did Nick Cannon when they took uh, uh, yeah. Wild and Out from him. Right. And they showed him. And then he kowtowed and bowed down. Mm -hmm. And now he's, he's able to host that show where they dress up like big puppets. And he, he, he yeah. got that show. They yeah. didn't and now he's, he's going to bow down back down. Okay, we'll play on. Show you those videos. Um, so I say all that to say, Felicia Rashad is absolutely right with everything she said. And I'm saying, I feel the reason is it's something bigger. It's absolutely because, yes, he was trying to get back on TV. I heard at one point he was trying to buy NBC or some shit. And I think mm -hmm. that's when all the shit really started. This was years ago, but I think that's when they really got tight at him. It was like, oh, hell no. So I don't know what he did personally to maybe, you know, cross one of these motherfuckers, but I feel it's a, it, it's, it's bigger than just Bill. So, um, excuse the language on that, but um, Lord Jamal, some of the points he said is um, is really, r really on point, biblically. Mm -hmm. uh, let me get one more video. We almost done on time. Uh, there is a part. I'm going. There's a scripture. Um, get me the book of Second Ezra, chapter five, and um, I think it's eighteen. Let me look at it. Really? it or it's it might be verse eight, eight or eighteen. Could y'all imagine the resentment that Zion would have, like as he got older and he said, like, "Damn, Yo, Dad, you let me do that. Why'd you let me do that?" <laughs> but you know what? Just like. Lord Jamal said they put these more effeminate brothers out there. And, you know, we we talk about the brother Dwayne Wade. Recently, he was on the Jimmy Kimmel show, him and Gabrielle Union, and he openly admitted that he does not run his household. He's not the head of his house. Mm -hmm. So the house is out of order, so therefore the son is going to be out of order. <laughs> and we oh read that God. in Sirach chapter 3. The, the father established the blessing of the house. Yep. And the, the mother will upbraid it. She will destroy it. And that's a perfect example. All right, let's, um, let's read this scripture. And then we're going to play the next I Am a Man, Black Masculinity in America. It's an old um, short documentary by a brother named Byron Hill. Or Byron Hurt, rather. Go ahead. Second Ezra, chapter 5, verse 8. Uh -huh. That should be a confusion also in many places. So the Lord said there's going to be a confusion in many places. You want to know why we know this is biblical? It first started off in Babylon. Now you're going to find this confusion is coming up in these other countries. These other races in Nasha are doing the same thing. Democracy, the agenda of Esau, that two-headed um, uh, democracy and Christianity, that's what allowed this vehicle of confusion to, 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 to spread out. Okay, read on. There should be a confusion also in many places. Many places. Come on. And the fire shall be sent off. And the fire shall be off, sent out again. Right. And trust me, why, why, what would that mean? Because during Sodom and Gomorrah, the fire was sent forth. 
the fire in the spirit is going to be set forth again. That's why when you read in Peter, it talks about with the great noise and fire. When you read in Isaiah about the fire to come, the lake of fire in Revelation. This place has to be purged like the first world was purged with water. Fire will purge this again. Mm. Read. And the wild beasts shall change their places. Right. And that's and you see oftentimes um, a bishop used sharks will beat uh, beach themselves and other animals are, are, are doing things that are unnatural. Why? The environment's being polluted. Things are the, the earth is physically is changing. OK, read on. And menstruous women. That means men, women that can have children, menstruous women, come on. Shall bring forth monsters. Monsters is being put forth in the earth. And guess what? The menstruous women that's bringing them forth, the monsters would not be in the house if daddy was in there setting the regulation of God's commandments. We read about that in Sirach 3. Okay, so this is why it's, it's high time that the black man stand up. And take back, his, and the masculinity you're going to get is going to come from this Bible. All right, give me the last real quick. Give me the Bible dictionary real quick because the, 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 Lord got, the Lord got something for these scholars to put in this doggone Bible dictionary. Because there ain't nothing, uh, you got Officer Mikael, right? The man has a big beard on his face, right? You hear people will say all the time, why don't you shave your face? You'll look so much more cleaner. Yeah, I do. I hear it all the time from my aunties, man. They trying to get me to shave my beard. Right, my job. I'll show my job. Look. Well, actually, some of the guys in my job got a beard. All pray. Thank the Lord that the men are in some of these guys. Even they, they have other nations have beards. This is masculine. Yep. This is the way men are supposed to look. Okay? Not like, with all due respect, a uh, uh, low healy repent. Not like uh, Eddie uh, EJ. Johnson. EJ. Come on, man. What's wrong with you? Read. This is from the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. The definition of beard. A badge of manly dignity. So a badge meaning it's a token. It shows that that is your man. Your man. Just like God gave you a rod. That's a badge of manly dignity too. God gave you a beard. Bam. So just like when you cut off your rod. Lord forbid you brothers do that. You cut off your beard, you taking away your manliness. And, the, and that's what the scholars wrote, these elite scholars who wrote the Bible dictionary. Okay? Come on, y'all. Last video, then we're going to close out. It's only four minutes. This film that I'm producing is about black masculinity. It's about the storm that we feel inside. The whole construction of black masculinity as we, we know it is it, so much. I want everyone to watch this a couple of times at home. If those of you are watching, I want you to watch because there's a lot of short segments that, that is, there's a lot that you can go into. We're going to watch the first minute that we're going to jump to the end, and I'm not going to say anything. Remember, this is a video the brother documented. He's the one who put it together, and he's trying to preserve black masculinity. But watch what there's a there's something mm. play. Fired in patriarchal thinking within a white supremacist capitalist patriarchy that uh, the black men can't begin to liberate themselves without interrogating and questioning how sexism has shaped the nature of black masculinity. One of the things that people have wait, done. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, run that back. Run it back. I want to hear what she said again. Right there. Without interrogating and questioning how sexism has shaped the nature of black masculinity. It's one of the things. Sexism has shaped the nature of black masculinity. So, going into all these examples, what they're doing is they're taking young black men and putting this thought in their head that, to make them want to be Coxie. young black women instead of black men. It, like, I don't think we're going to get to it tonight, but like even Will Smith and his son Jaden, Will kept kissing him in his mouth on national television. And now that young man is wearing dresses. Uh, he's openly gay. He's dating Tyler, the uh, creator. Th that, 
the sexism shaping black masculinity. You, you know what I just noticed? Majority of our public figures are homosexual. Mm -hmm. The Chinese man, the Arab man, the East Indian man, I don't see any of their public figures homosexual. Nope. It's only honest. Check this out. So, uh, and this, uh, this, these short segments, they get a really um, very profound black um, points of view, uh, psychological, um, sociology. Now, let's play on a little bit more, and then I want you to skip to the last three minutes and 30 seconds on, and then I'm gonna, we're going to bring it out. This brother made the documentary because he's saying that there's a problem of black masculinity. He wants to bring justice and light to it. Watch this. Play on that people have done in every form of slavery is try to rob the male of a ma his masculinity. To make sure the black male was under control. You better get some daggum discipline, you understand me? I'm not gonna put up with your crap. Roll your eyes. Be sorry for yourself. Now pause right here. So far there was a psychiatrist, there was a mayor, there was a, um, I think it was a doctor, and a, there was another lady at the beginning. So there's some the, the guy's tr is the, the, uh, Bishop Yao's episode. What is the mind of the man that's editing this? What is his point? And he's coming across, comes out the Golden Gate Bridge, talking about black medicine and the storm we feel inside, right? Okay. So you think this brother is trying to bring some justice. Now, go to three minutes and 30 seconds. Y'all watch this on your own. We're about to end the show in two minutes. Watch right there, right there. Watch, listen to, look and listen. Because you're going to find that all of these people, Lord Jamal is on point, but Lord Jamal, he, he, he got things he got to work on. Watch this. Play on. We are uh, wielding the weapons of our own self-destruction. We have been tricked into believing that killing the next man to handle our problem is masculine or makes us down. We're hurting each other, killing one another. Hurting one another. You know what? It's mostly black men doing it to black men. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Our children are in need. Women hit the home. What's going on? The rich get rich. The poor get sick. And everybody's saying, you can make it. Don't quit. This is being a man. This is being a man. This is being a man. And this is being a man. So pause. Stop, stop. Pause real quick. So at the end, when he's concluding, this was in the 80s, by the way, right? Because Eric Dyson looked mad young. When you saw it. So at the end, they're saying that all of the, the turmoil that we go through, all the things since they went back to slavery, but then they give you examples of this as being a man. And it's, it's subtle, but there's an agenda even behind what this dude, because he had to, somebody edited that. So I said, I'm going to make it seem like this, but at the end... I'm going to slip it in. And what happens is you see, this is being a man. It shows uh, a brother, I think, hugging like his aunt or his mother, right? Okay, cool. We got to have a soft side towards our women. Then it shows a, a, a father with his daughter on his mm -hmm. lap. Okay, well, great. And it shows two openly men who are attracted, kissing one another on the mouth. And it happened quick. And then, and then they... they Bring you right back real quick, and then they show you two other examples. Showing you that this is, it has been orchestrated from the highest level. That's why you'll never see that article we read before about the hundreds of people that wish they could detransition and never had done that. Why isn't that making, why isn't that all over? That's like you finding out, I, I, listen, don't, I can show you how not to go to jail. I can show you how not to smoke crack. I can, and they're not showing that because the people that's running this country is workers of iniquity in, in very high places, and they're controlling everything. That's why we got to come out. Anyways, look, we're going to end the show now. Um, we, we, we pray you got something out of the show. Next week, we're going to continue on. Uh, I want to bring up Kwame Brown. We have, a, like, multiple things we didn't yeah. get to, all right? Yeah. Um, scriptures was coming out tonight, all right? Uh, Mick, Officer Mikael. Hey, look, if y'all want to continue to see the show, uh, continue to have sanctuaries in your cities. Give alms. You can give to your local school by dropping the envelope in the alms box, or you can go online via PayPal. 
If you want to donate to IUIC New Orleans, you can do so via PayPal at iuic.neworleans at israelunite.org. Also, make sure y'all donating to the Booster Club. Make sure you're donating to the Booster Club so our leadership can, can, can continue to go throughout the four corners of the earth, bringing forth this true gospel so we can come home. You can donate to the Booster Club at iuic.fundraising at israelunite.org. That's right. Israel United in Christ. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel United in Christ is a nonviolent Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat as stated in Leviticus chapter 5, verse 1. All right, so we're going to conclude the show. This is Precept Upon Precept. We're your host, Captain Shem. Officer Mikael. Officer Iran. Officer Akiyam. Look, like Bishop say, study, pray, apply, uh, apply these commandments, and let's try to reach one and teach one. It's not an, an attack. It's an education. It's an awakening. It's time to repent, Israel. So with that, with Precept Upon Precept, with that we say, Shalom. Shalom.